It's been quite a couple of days because this started off with two very senior uh, members of the cabinet resigning. Then we had a, a few, a, a small trickle of, of ministers and PPSs, and then it really caught fire. And we saw minister after minister, PPS after PPS, as uh, private secretary, resigning. Boris Johnson has shown very little contrition, very little recognition of what people have said are his mistakes. And it's very unusual. Even the most defiant of leaders, the leaders who think that they've done a good job, who've been in power for long periods, people like Mrs Thatcher, people like Tony Blair, tend to have regrets about their time in office. So he really is, is playing up to his, his image as someone who isn't necessarily um, rolling with the punches and accepting them, he's very much coming out fighting. Yes, he's trying to control the narrative that there's the sort of herd mentality that if he had his way, he could prove that the policy and the mandate he'd be given could come to fruition. But there seems to be no attention to the fact that there has been so much failure of his government, even if we don't look at the lies and the revised stories that he kept making up every time he was faced with some scandal. That's right. There have been so many scandals which would have sunk other prime ministers. They would have resigned on principle and he didn't. And as you rightly say, this isn't just about personality. It's not even about personal scandal. There have been policy issues that have been absolutely enormous. Things like the procurement of PPE protective equipment during uh, COVID. Things like whether or not the British government were active in... Um, managing to uh, de deport individuals from Afghanistan as the Taliban were taking over, issues relating to whether or not we are deporting immigrants to Rwanda, huge numbers of scandals. And he has essentially done today what he's done repeatedly, which is to point the finger somewhere else. It's someone else's fault. It's someone else's fault that this has happened or that he hasn't had the opportunity to, to fix it or write it. He was in front of the liaison committee yesterday at the Houses of Parliament for a couple of hours, and he was absolutely roasted. And he he never really accepted any responsibility for any of this. It is who Boris Johnson is. Yes. As, as one of our earlier guests pointed out, it's almost like this disconnect with reality is who he likes, how he likes to portray himself, how he sees himself uh, as some sort of kingmaker, um, and it's disconnected to his actual performance. The, the British public view Boris Johnson in, in a number of different ways. For those who really like him, they see him as being fun, human, slightly buffoonish, but in touch with them. For those who don't like him, they argue that he is egotistical, he is essentially completely disconnected from, from real life, and that he thinks he has a right to be Prime Minister, that he was somehow born to be Prime Minister, and that it's unfair for anyone to take it away from him. But, it, you know, those people are very polarised, um, and the Conservative Party now seems to be filled more with the the latter group than the former. Mm. Victoria, I'd like your assessment. You know, one of the, the claims of his success today has been the man who delivered Brexit. Now, when we look at the extraordinary financial confusion that is existing in the UK now as a result of the way Brexit has been managed, is that seen as a success for the British people? Again, it depends. For those who backed Brexit, the, the fallout from Brexit isn't necessarily the key indicator and it isn't necessarily something they're willing to accept. Very often they will blame it on COVID, they will blame it on a whole variety of other things which may or may not be valid. For those who wanted Brexit done, as far as they're concerned, the documents were signed, Britain is no longer a member of the EU, that's done. For others, they argue that Brexit isn't done, that we've essentially signed some documents, but we've still got a huge way to go before you could argue that Brexit is, is really completed, not least regarding perhaps the thorniest of issues, which is the Northern Irish Protocol. For those individuals, Boris Johnson either pushed through a policy that was extremely bad or actually couldn't push through the policy that was extremely bad and only really got halfway across the line. So, again, it does depend on whether or not you like him or not, whether or not you think he did a good job. Mm. Is there any danger that in the remaining days and weeks that he is still the Prime Minister, essentially, that he could still try and push through some of that policy? Or do you think it's going to be clear that any new Prime Minister will have the mandate to, to then direct... The, 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 you know, the ongoing negotiations with regard to Brexit and some of the other issues that the country is facing? 
there's still huge debate as to how much time he's going to have. His his uh, resignation speech did not buy him many friends back in the Conservative Party. And it may well be that in the next 24 to 48 hours, we see the 1922 committee beginning to think about, OK, how do we do this? Do we actually want Boris Johnson to remain in office for a couple of months to, ha to see the handover? Or will somebody else have to do it? If he does remain in office, he will essentially be um, completely removed from power he's there really as a caretaker and while he might try to exercise his muscles a little bit to try and get some of this policy done he isn't going to get a lot of cooperation from his backbenchers i think it's unlikely